If my life were to be in the hands of men, I for don't see Pepe. But I'm counting on this able God. Please ask those two people to go and sit at the back. Go and sit at the back. Please move. Move them to the back. If you can't honor God, please let me not be seeing your face. Go to the back and sit. Please move. We are going to thank God. David said he picked me up from the married clay and set my feet on the solid rock to stay. Where you will be, God is the one that will place you. God is the one that will place you. So you need to thank that hand that is still lifting men. He said, <laughs> you are the lifter and the glory of my head. If man is your lifter, man can drop you. But if God is your lifter, you will keep going up. When God sends the right man to lift you, you can't go down. We are going to say, Lord, for being our lifter, I thank you. Lift up your voice and appreciate it. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. You are changing many stories, lifting many destiny. I give you praise and I give you glory. The glory and the lifter. No man can lift himself. You are able to do exceeding abundantly. Thank you for many change of levels. Thank you for many change of levels. Thank you for many change of levels. Many change of positions. Thank you for turning many misfortune into fortune. I give you praise and I bless your name. I give you praise and I bless your name. I give you praise and I bless your name. Thank you, mighty God, for wiping away tears. Taking away shame, taking away reproach, setting many on the table, table of honor, table of glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Write it down. Today is 12th, 13th of May, 2018. Your financial story must change. If there is any grace that I have, is money grace. And that's why I sought to carry this thing from Papa Ellie. I pursue it with all desperation. And everyone that Papa has deposited it in, in their life, I made sure I connected to them. Mark my word, you will not end up a small man. Write it down today is 13th of May. Your financial story must change. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Wherever they found your poverty, by the blood today, I decree it deleted from your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any power behind your financial misfortune, their spell over your life is broken today. If you are saying a message, better amen. So shall it be. Somebody's tears is ending this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. My financial story must change, part one. God is the ultimate changer of every man's financial story. Scripture said he was made poor so that through his poverty we might become rich. 
Jesus died for your poverty. You are not permitted to end up poor if you are redeemed. No wonder Papa said you are not born again to suffer again. You are not born again to suffer again. I don't know how you see lack. I hate lack. I hate it. To be in lack, everything about your life will be disorganized. If you are in lack, your thinking will not be correct. Am I saying the truth? If you are in lack, your thinking cannot be balanced. You will be offended on people you should not be offended with. It's a sign that poverty is torturing the person. God does not delight in our lack. God is not even interested in you being poor. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Above all things, which means in God's scale of preference, your prosperity is his priority. God has scale of preference. What do we call scale of preference? A list of things you want to do. What occupies number one in the things you want to do? In God's own scale of preference, your prosperity is number one. In his list. So it's not thinking of how you will serve him and end up poor. <laughs> that is why Jesus went to the cross. So the beginning point of your fortune being torn around is first of all you need to start believing his word. Who you don't believe can't help you. No matter the grace he carries. Who you don't believe can't help you. And Jesus could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. If you don't believe me, how can I help you? Even if I'm loaded with all the grace, I am incapacitated. Why? Because there is a, an invisible wall of unbelief blocking you from assessing what I carry. That is how it is. As omnipotent as God is, if you are still doubting whether your story, your financial story will change, he, is, he cannot help you. God is helpless when you are hopeless. No wonder scripture says, blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance. So the word you believe is what set the pace of what you become. The word has an inbuilt force. So initiate and establish your change. For the word of the Lord is quick and it is powerful. Quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine in the son of the soul and the spirit and of the joint and of the marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. The word is quick. When God says it, you don't need to ask, how will it come to pass? It's the same query Mary asked. How shall this be since I know not a man? How shall this be since I know not a man? I want to let you know your prosperity is God determined, not man determined. 
is God determined. I know God will use man, but man is not the number one factor. The number one factor is God. God. No wonder the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from where cometh my head. My head cometh from God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. How shall this be? Since I know not a man. Hear me? Number one, if your financial story must change, first of all, take your eyes off man. Put your eyes on God. My soul, wait thou only upon the Lord, for my expectation is of him. Man can change. God is constant. I am the Lord. I change it not. Time will fail me to tell you all the mockeries that I've got, I've gotten in this journey. But I'm so grateful to this God. Just like Solomon prayed, he said, Lord, disappoint the expectation of my enemies. God has disappointed all of them. And that's how God will disappoint the expectation of their enemies. Just collect the phone. Please be careful. I, I will be mad with any person. If you, if you can't honor God's presence, I check you out. It's a very simple thing. Any phone that you see, just collect it first. If man determines what you get, you go suffer. What did I say? God is the one that decides what you get. Every good and perfect gift coming from above. From the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. So when God gives it to you, be rest assured, it is settled. Now that it is established, it is God determined, you must catch a revelation of his word. When Papa came out with an insight after reading God's will for you is prosperity by Gloria Copeland, he said, I spinned and turned around and said, I can never be poor. As at that time, he was still using his beetle. The beetle that attracted so much mockery. I remember reading recently, he said one of his friends who was using, you know those days if you have 504, you are the king of the road now. You are the, in fact, they are the barbers of those days. Yeah. <laughs> he said one man so mocked him, mocked him, so he was just doing his thing. The man, he said, look at people that are preaching prosperity. And the uh, car is, push me, I push you. So, the man even came for his meeting and was still mocking him. He kept just like you are in church now, as someone can be sitting and be mocking pastor. The man came for Papa's meeting and was mocking Papa because he was uh, using 504 that time. What is Papa using now? <laughs> he said, I've been flying for 22 years. I didn't start flying today. Now hear me. Flying is not a problem. Oh. I hope you know every day that jet is parked at the airport, you are paying nothing less than $4,000. It's not flying that is the problem. Oh. Can you pay the bill? Can you pay the bill that goes with the flying? Parking bill. <laughs> to park alone, that is to park. Every day, not every month. Minimum four thousand dollars. 
If you fly to Benin, you must pay. Oh. You pay landing fee, you pay parking fee. So flying is not the problem. Are you able to pay the bill that goes with the flying? So calculate it. He said they mocked me and I despised them. He said I've been changing levels and all the mockers are still behind. Should I tell you something? All your mockers will be behind. <laughs> so when he saw it, what did he see? Those are some of the things we need to see now. God told Abraham as far as your eyes can see. Should I tell you something? Financial fortune is seen. If your fortune will change, you will see it. It's not what is in your hand. It's what registers in your memory. Jeremiah, what sees thou? He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou as well seen. He said, I will, I will hasten my word to do what? Performance. I will hasten my word to perform it. God is more particular with what you see. Because if you cannot see it, he cannot do it. Your problem is not where you are living. Your problem is not where you are working. Your problem is not where you are born into. Your problem is, can you see yourself? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The brighter you see, the farther you go. God cannot take you farther than you have seen. Your hopelessness is registered in your memory. Your poverty is registered in your memory. Your misfortune is registered in your memory. My future is bright. My future is glorious. When I think, I think good things. I process good thoughts. Hear me? Thoughts are magnetic. What you think determines what you attract. If you think evil, you have in increased your capacity to attract evil people. If you think good, you have increased your capacity to attract good people. When you think opportunity, doors begin to open. So your misfortune is in your head. Likewise, your fortune is also what? the Lord will do nothing except I see what is in your mind. What is in your mind? So the act of God in your life is limited to what goes on in your mind. Say with me, my mind. Your mind is the bank of your wealth. Your mind is the bank of your fortune, not where you walk. You may be a teacher and be a billionaire. You may be a local government worker and be paying other people's salary. Say with me, my mind. That's why Bishop Abiyah said that our mind is the factory of our wealth. Our mind. Your mind. <laughs> your mind begins to draw. As his thinking is drawing. As his thinking is drawing. So Baba caught a revelation. I cannot be poor. So from then he said, my perspective began to change. I began to think, dress. He said, can a poor man be wearing he pass to church? He said, no. There's a way poor people behave. He said, I won't behave that way. There's a way poor people dress. He said, I won't dress that way. There's a way poor people talk. He said, I won't talk that way. Because... <laughs> Mentality affects destiny. What did I say? Mentality affects what? Destiny. And destiny is a pointer to your destination. So fortune begins with what? What you see. What you see. What are you seeing? On what you now see, that is.
is what brings you into God agreement. You are now entering into an agreement. Lord, this is what I'm saying. And you said, as far as my eyes can see, that you will give unto me. I know I cannot reach there by myself. I know what you can get me there. This is where I want to reach. You know, in God's scale of blessing, you can change the goalposts anytime. That's why the bigger your vision, the bigger your enlargement. As your vision is growing, <laughs> you are changing position. As you are changing position, that's how it's changing. It's increasing doors. That's why beginning small is not your problem. Scripture said, though that beginning be small, thy latter end shall do what? Greatly. Say with me, greatly. Psalm 80, 89 and verse 34. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that I've gone out of my mouth. God is a covenant keeper. He's a covenant keeper. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now I said before, who you don't believe cannot help you no matter the grace he carries. Number two, who you don't believe, you cannot trust him to take you there. You will be nursing some sense of disappointment that he may change, but God is an unchangeable God. You either trust him with the whole of your heart or you doubt him with the whole of your heart. People that have trusted him, he has never disappointed them. So entering into a covenant path with God gives you rest. My story will change. No matter who doesn't like my face, no matter who has vowed not to help me, God will help me. You must say that to yourself. I say God will help me. I'm not ashamed to say it. I remember when I graduated as a geologist. I've not even gone for youth service. My in-law said uh, that he won't help me. No fight, no quarrel. No fight, no what? So when my mother told me, I said, thank God. People that should be delivered from me, showing me early. May God show you who you need to be delivered from. Amen. So that you won't go and be having hope on them and have heart attack. Amen. Am I saying the truth? Yes. There are some people you can be hoping on and you have heart attack. You so trusted them that they will do this, they will do that, and all of it. Heart attack does start. <laughs> May the Lord deliver you from early heart attack. <laughs> so immediately he said, that I said, thank God. Do you know why I said thank God? God started warning me in my third year. He woke me up one morning with a scripture. We just came back from class that early morning around five. We went to the tower to pray as we were coming down. Put not your trust in man of what account is he. I didn't even know it was in the Bible. So I started looking for it where it was in the Bible. I think I saw it in Isaiah chapter one and chapter two. One of the verses there. So that day I was very sober. Say with me, sober. sober. Do you know why I was sober? I banked on my friend. My friend then, his father was MKO Abiola's accountant. So we we're already planning. We we'll register this company. We we'll do this drilling company. We we'll do this one. God just give me go at that day. I didn't even know that Abiola would die. So when that thing hit me, I was very sober. To let you know that God was the one talking to me, one of our um, follow-up brothers, Sam Akiride, he came. We were just sitting. That, was, that day was a convocation day. So we were just sitting. I was not laughing with anybody. The thing was still going through my mind. Sam said, Tony, what are you thinking about? I said, relax. Oh. 
I didn't tell anybody. Nobody has had it. He said, do you know my mother's brother is a manager in Chevron? Common IT. Common IT. That this man will just give me letter and they will just give me IT position. My IT four months was wasted. I didn't do any IT. He said, don't put your trust in any man or trust only God. Immediately he said it, I jump up. I said, you are speaking by the Spirit of God. I said, do you know what happened to me this morning? God told me not to trust any man. Hear me? If you misbehave, I won't be offended. I know you are not needed in my journey. That's my rule. The moment you misbehave, I will drop you meat. Straight. You are not needed in my journey. Who is needed in my journey will not disappoint me on the way. I will allow you misbehave well. The journey continues. I've already been one. Puts no trust in man. So immediately that happened. So everything I was doing, I made sure he didn't hear it. He can hear it from others, but not from my mouth. So one day he now got offended. Why is it that Tony is not? He said, he has already made up his mind not to be involved to involve you in anything he's doing. Shebi, you said you will not help him. He had it. So he keeps you out. Tell your neighbor, keep him out. I began to look up. Tell your neighbor, look up. The strength of your covenant with God is looking up. You can't be claiming though that you have a covenant with God and you are not looking up. Man can change you. I'm warning somebody now. This word is going to someone. Put your trust in God. You have trusted men too much and they have failed you too much. The more you trust men, the more they fail you. But put your trust in God. Tell your neighbor, trust God. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. And make it not arm his trust. He says, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. He says, his leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall do what? Prosper. He said, but cost is the man that put his trust in man. He said, he shall not see good when he cometh. He said, he shall inhabit the parched places of the earth. You won't see good. You will only be seeing bad, 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 bad. Trust God. The, the, what makes the covenant to work for you is your trust. That God cannot fail. When you trust God, and you believe the covenant. Giving becomes cheap. Tell your neighbor, giving becomes cheap. The reason why the covenant is not working for some people, they don't trust God. And that is why giving is a struggle. Say so that God is using me. Use you for what? Pastor is using us. He just psych everybody. Psych you for what? Come, let me show you my tight record. Use you for what? Hear me. Everyone is pressing his way. I'm not using you. Everyone is pressing his way. Scripture says, work out your salvation. With what? You have been saved from sin. The remaining things, you will work it out. You will work out your prosperity. Are you here once? Pastor is not using you for nothing. Everyone is walking this way. If I fail to be a giver, I will be a poor man. Hear me? If I fail to be a giver, I will be a begging pastor. But God forbid. I have vowed not to be a begging pastor. So I must give my way. I will press. Tell your neighbor, press. God is not eating chicken and salad. He's not spending dollars and pounds in heaven. We need it here. It's not needed there. You can't make God rich, but everyone depends on him to be rich. You can't make God rich. So, 
Even what you have now, who gave it to you? That's why, if you can't trust this God, you make it difficult for your giving to produce. And that is one of the major struggles many are having in the church. They feel that they are giving to church. Hear me? Your giving is not a donation. Your giving is enforcing your covenant. Because you trust this God. Should I tell you something? If you are not a giver, even the children you will raise, they will not also be givers. Because they copy you in whatever you are doing. If you are not a giver, your children, they will not also be givers. You will keep money, they will go and steal it. Do you know why? They have not seen what you are doing. Because whatever they see you do is what they copy quick. Children, they learn by graphics. They learn by pictures. So giving becomes a delight when you have believed the covenant. So you are not just having faith with mouth, you are having faith with works. Why? Because you trust God and you trust the covenant. Trusting God and trusting the covenant is very simple. Jeremiah 33, let's read it from verse 19. Jeremiah 33, let's read it from verse 19. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, Thus saith the Lord, if ye can break my covenant of the day, and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season. Verse 21. Then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites and the priests and my ministers. Verse 22. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply thy seed the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that ministers unto me. Multiply thy seed as the sands of the seashore. So in every seed, there is a forest. Every seed has what? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you also sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life. Say with me, life. As long as the earth remaineth, see time and harvest time shall not cease. Why? The covenant is working. Works in financial fortune without any human assistance. Thank God he was old. He started his own journey at 75. So that you will not say that uh, he's someone that uh, connected him to Shell or connected him to Julius Vega or connected him to Central Bank. He started his own journey old, but he believed the covenant. Tell your neighbor, believe the covenant. The moment you begin to believe the covenant, you have changed frequency. Giving now becomes a delight. There is he that withhold it and tend it to what? It's written in the Bible. But there is he that scatter it and yet what? Increase it. Giving becomes a delight. The covenant number two reinsures your foundation. We have a foundation of poverty before we are born again. Why? Our forefathers we are giving to idols, sacrificing to idols. 
if you have been to the south, it's not only it's not limited to the south, it's also in these areas. There are some companies, you go every company you go, you see a shine. Every company, shine, 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 shine. Which means there is something tying everybody there. You can be doing God for me, God for me, God for me. Now mouth you get. The thing don't they there before they burn you. The only way you can bail yourself out is the covenant. <laughs> this is what brings you out. So our offerings, our seeds, they are the things that provoke the covenant to work in our favor. By myself have I sworn in blessing, I will do what? Bless you. In multiplying, I will do what? Multiply. Like that testimony you read. You see, that man said he hates anytime he hears give it, he hates it. Do you know why he hated it? It's the demon of poverty of his father's house. Don't mind them all. They want to collect your money. So he'll be telling you, don't give. Just like someone in the church now. Anytime he has given, he will be offended. Hear me? That thing is what is keeping you on the floor. You may never rise. It is the spirit called poverty. Poverty is a spirit. Oh, you don't know? It is a bad spirit. It will make you, anytime they talk about giving, some people will even go to the toilet when they are talking offering. I remember the testimony, um, an experience someone had. He had a challenge one time, so he was now praying that God should intervene. But every time they were taking offering, he was, also, he was always going to the toilet. So he was now requesting for God to intervene and doors to open for him. The angel now showed him that the drum of urine. He said, when others were going to offer, going giving their offering, you are always going to urinate. He said, that's your harvest. I know somebody does not like that one. So the covenant, hear me? Your giving silences the voice that cries out. Let me tell you, these forces are vowed that no one will lift up his head. That's why in some families, everybody's on the same level. Everybody's on the same benchmark. But you'll be the first to break it. The more you're giving, the more the thing breaks. The more the voice is silence. If that voice is not silence, there are heights you will never attain. When the enemy shall come, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. So when that voice begins to cry out, you say, shut up. This one is a covenant practitioner. Abraham believed God and walked in it. Do you know Abraham gave tithe? Abraham was paying tithe to Melchizedek. So our tithing ensures our covenant foundation. Not occasionally, but consistently. I started paying tithe from 25 Naira. I still have my tithe booklet in my box. Uh, baby, please help me next Sunday. Let me bring out all those things. I need to show some people. From 25 Naira to 50 Naira. 50 Naira to 110 Naira. That's how the thing was, has been growing, 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 growing. Now, to pay tithe is no longer a struggle. I was sharing with you yesterday. When I was to pay my first tithe of 200,000, it's like they were to collect blood from my body. I'm not joking, no. I wrote the check. But I wanted to draw it back. It was the demon that doesn't want me to break that range. I wanted to drop the check. My body was reacting. I plead the blood of Jesus. You know, when forces don't want you to go beyond where they say, change your mind. Change your mind. That money is too much. 
That money is too much. God understand, that money is too much. As I drop the tithe, it's like they poured me cold water here. I felt one kind of peace. I say, ah, this thing called money is a spirit. Oh, you don't know? It's a spirit. We had one elder. He had a property to sell. That property was worth over 10 million. I said, you want God to help you in that business, but you can't pay your tithe. I didn't know I was talking to the elder. Someone came. I shared a testimony. Someone went to meet a pastor. That was um, Chris Okotie. That um, he has a property to sell. That he wants God to do it very quick. Before he was about to pray, God asked him, asked him will he pay his tithe? He asked the man, will you pay your tithe? And I asked him, how much is the tithe? The property was worth over 100 million. He says it's 10 million plus. The man said, I'm coming. <laughs> Say with me, I'm coming. <laughs> he didn't come after some months. He now came back. He said, I'm ready now. Can you now see how powerful money is? As he prayed, in less than one week, the property was sold. He paid his tithes. So this elder now walked into the service, walked into the office after the first service. He said, Pastor, it's like you were talking to me. I said, yeah. I said, what happened? He said, I have a property to sell that I want to use in finishing my duplex. And that thing you are talking about looks like me. I said, how? He said, I've been struggling. He said, I've never believed this tight thing. I said, oh, I'm going to make things remain tight for you. So he finally made up his mind. I prayed for him. They've been dribbling him. They will pay today. They will change their mind. That same week, they paid him the money. So, as they paid him the money, he drove with speed and came and dropped the tithe. He said, I'm free now. I'm free now. Let me say this to someone. As many that are understanding it. Very soon, you cannot carry your tithe in envelope again. Yeah. You will be paying your tithe in checks. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The more you pay your tithe, the more you force the heavens to remain open. The more you pay your tithe, the heavens must open. The more you pay your tithe, <laughs> it's how we open the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. Titan brings what we call irrevocable blessing. Irrevocable. Titan connects you to the floodgates of ideas and inspiration. Titan brings you to the frequency of creative thinking. The floodgate of heaven is not where they pour salad, where they pour dollars. You now begin to receive inspiration ideas on what to do and things we work on what to do and money we flow God said prove me say with me prove me he knows that you are a mathematician that your head is calculator he knows you can think don't you know this tithe is too much that's why check all the verses in the bible come and borrow my concordance the only place where you see prove me is in tithe and offering. He said, prove me now here with and see if I will not. Can you now see what binds God to bless you? And prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing. Even Jesus validated tithe. Don't mind all these foolish, confused people that go to Facebook and they say, Titan is not publica. They have enforcing your poverty. And some people will be commenting, yes, tell them, tell them. Moo -moo. <laughs> that fool that calls himself Pastor Freeze is freezing your destiny. Antichrist pastor. 
telling you not to pay your tithe. Jesus validated tithing in Matthew 23, 23. Some people will still be arguing because you can't read the Bible. Your church is now in Facebook. Facebook is now your church. Anyone that wake up and begin to castigate her, the boy is castigate her papa, is now your pastor. It's because the spirit has left them. So they are now looking for people that the spirit will leave also and follow them. May God deliver you. God will not change the standard because of anybody. The Bible remains ancient. It's not modern. John D. Rockefeller was the first American billionaire. He, he became a billionaire by following the principle of tithing. He started tithing with five cents. Five cents. See, today in America, we still have Rockefeller Foundation. And all his children, they copied his ways. The first, uh, uh, say with me, the first. The first American billionaire, John D. Rockefeller. Follow the principles of the Bible. Let nobody deceive you. You can start small, but you can never end small. Never, never. It doesn't matter what is happening. Whether they say dollar is 550, oh, that one will not be your headache. When the time reaches, you go get this dollar. I say you go get this dollar. So giving remains the anchor and tithing sets the foundation. The next thing is our offering. Say with me, offering. As I dropped round up now. Your seed may look small. But hear me, your offering is a proof that the covenant of blessing is working. Is working. You can change your fortune by your seed. Two thousand and three, they took us, all my set there, to Canaan land to go and write computer test. So as they moved me into the executive secretary office, I saw a very big board. Your future is tied to your seed. And the thing kept flashing to my spirit. Your future is tied to your seed. I finished my test. The test was very simple. Just to know if you can handle MS Word, Excel, do your job alone without needing any secretary, without needing any admin pastor. You can do anything you want to do and send it on your own. So I finished and came out. But I, that thing was still ringing. Your future is tied to your seed. I began to read on the principle of the seed. I needed to understand it well. Because what you don't understand, you can't practice. If you don't understand, you can't practice. I began to read. I bought all the books of our robots. I began to read on the power of the seed. I began to read. I began to read Mike Mudok on the power of the seed. I now knew that you can get to anywhere you want in this life by your seed. Your seed can connect you to your breakthrough. Your seed can open any door. Your seed can turn around anything you want to turn around. Your seed can change your spiritual climate. Your seed can fight your battle. Your seed can stop your enemies. Your seed can be an instrument of vengeance in your hand. You hear me? A witch can fight your prayer if it's more powerful than you. But a witch cannot swallow your seed. Swallow and die. Alter the swallow altar. That's why you must understand the principle of seed. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Anything you will become now, God has started giving you. That's why 
When the story of the widow needed to be changed, the prophet said, what do you have in your house? He said, just a little oil that me and my child will eat and tomorrow we will die. Don't say you don't have anything. Right now as I'm talking, there is a seed in your hand. That's why I can tell you convincingly, your financial story must change. Why? Because you have a seed. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless return. Say with me, return. I can trek, but I must give offering. When your seed is in your hand, your future is guaranteed. Every seed goes for an assignment. No seed returns back as a seed. Every seed returns as a harvest. So you are not afraid of what tomorrow will look like. Your seed is ensuring your tomorrow. So as you are dropping your seed, you are empowering your future to produce. When your seed is in your hand, a spiritual transaction takes place to unlock. Do you know your seed is what connects you to your helpers? There are financial helpers that must meet you, but you need your seed to connect to them. Seed is powerful. Pastor Ibiomi told me, not that I had from tape. He said, when Papa read God's will for you is prosperity, Papa saw Titan. He said, when me I read, I see prophet of rain. He said, so I, I plugged into it plus the Titan. He said, I don't care what anybody thinks, so, but that's, that's what me I see. And it's working for me. It is your choice, so that's not where I'm going now. I'm still talking on the principle of the seed. Hear me? You are where you are today by reason of the seed you sowed. If you want to change your level, change your seed. Change your seed. Tell your neighbor, change your seed. When you have your seed, you will smile when harvest come. Don't give anybody opportunity to pity you again. Your future is colorful. You will be rich. You will build houses. You will drive good liquors. You will not leave a legacy of poverty for your children. Your financial story must change. If you are saying amen, say better. Amen. So with your seed in your hand, I want to let you know you will connect to great places. Amen. Lastly, as we rise up to pray, Pastor Ibiomi said something in this last International Ministers Conference. He said, um, one of the greatest challenges of pastors is giving. Because they feel that uh, they are the ones that people should be giving to. And that's why many of them are poor. He said it without any apology to anybody. He says it's your giving that secures you, not what people give you. It's not what you give me that makes me blessed. It's what me I give. Don't carry a Nathaniel mentality. Nata, 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 nata. Collect, 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 collect. Be a donor. Tell your neighbor, be a donor. There is he that scattered and increases. There is he that withhold it and tended to what? Poverty. Rise to your feet. You are going to pray for two minutes. Financial misfortunes can be fired as an arrow. I'm in the deliverance department, so I know what I'm talking about. But whoever fired you an arrow, there is a standard called the blood. He said, turn you to your stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. He said, even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Whoever imprisoned you in the prison of poverty, as you partake of this communion, you are coming out. 
you are going to pray every arrow of financial misfortune fired against my life my destiny my career by this communion lord let the arrow backfire lift up your voice and begin to pray every arrow of poverty of financial shame of financial misfortune every arrow of lack every arrow of financial reproach fired against me by this communion lord scatter the counsel of the wicked every arrow of financial shame every arrow of lack every arrow fire to seek my business lord by this communion let the arrow backfire arrow of financial shame be destroyed arrow of financial misfortune fired against my life lord by this communion let the arrow backfire as i partake of this communion whatever has been enchanted to make me poor lord let the arrow backfire lift up your voice pray from the depth of your heart lord i am coming out of lack every handwriting of misfortune fire to reduce me to make me a beggar all this communion father by this communion let the enchantment be swallowed up by fire let the invocation be swallowed up by fire so shall it be in jesus name we pray all eyes closed all eyes bow you are here you are not born again this is your golden moment accepting jesus number one is the pathway pathway to escape lack it's a common to me all ye that are labor and heavy laden and i will give you rest you want to make it right with jesus put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me lord jesus i come unto you today i know that i'm a sinner forgive me wash me with your precious blood i reject sin i reject satan come into my life be my lord be my savior in jesus name i pray you pray that prayer with me come right now i want to pray with you put your hands together for jesus if you pray that prayer with me just come right now